Department of Finance welcomes this opportunity to participate in this dialogue on the government of St. Lucia's current short to medium term debt strategy and its implications for the business community. The meeting presents an opportunity for critical feedback on one of the most important policies of government. This message is made in the context of the broader policy of the government of St. Lucia. The government of St. Lucia's policy was formulated in the context of the country's economic realities and constraints. I will look briefly at St. Lucia's macroeconomic indicators and will address the country's debt burden as well as prioritized interventions which will be taken by the government of St. Lucia to correct the deterioration of the St. Lucian economy. St. Lucia's economic performance has deteriorated over the past few decades as indicated by the general reduction in growth. From 1987 to 1996, the average nominal growth rate was 8.7%. 1997 to 2000, 5%. And 2007 to 2016, 4%. A similar decline was experienced in real GDP with the real GDP for 2007 to 2011 being 1.9%, compared to real GDP for the next five-year period, 2012 to 2016, being 0.3%, which is a significant reduction. The country has continued to suffer from a number of long-standing challenges in its economy. Among these are a narrow production base, low productivity, strong dependence on fossil fuels, and exposure to natural disasters. These have all hampered St. Lucia's growth potential. And these weaknesses were highlighted by the global financial crisis with reductions in tourist inflows, which spilled over to the rest of the economy through increase in unemployment through, sorry, and increased bank non-performing loans. The country's unemployment rate has steadily deteriorated from 14% in 2007 and peaked at 24.4% in 2014. Marginal improvements are now being seen in employment with an optimistic forecast for the future, which will be driven largely by construction and tourism in the short and medium term. Additionally, the agricultural sector remains highly vulnerable to natural disasters. Recent storms, including Tropical Storm Matthew, the Christmas Eve trough, and Hurricane Thomas have caused significant damage to the sector, resulting in further reductions in yields and continued loss of market share. Natural disasters have also placed a financial burden on the government in the form of unplanned restorative capital expenditure. Foreign direct investments and grant contributions have dwindled in recent years. And this too has contributed to the deterioration of the government's fiscal position. Reductions in grant, grant funding is in particular has created a gap in the government's capital financing. This has resulted in successive governments running deficit budgets and increasing the public debt burden in order to continue its capital financing. 
The government has tried to cushion and stimulate the economy with re within recent years through various construction stimulus packages, public sector-led construction, labor market programs such as NICE and HOPE. However, increases in recurrent expenditure as a result of capital expenditure coupled with a narrow tax base have contributed to the increases in public debt over time. The increase in public debt has raised concern with the government of St. Lucia's ability to raise the requisite financing. At times, the lack of appetite for medium to long-term debt has led to the reliance on short-term instruments, particularly treasury bills, and these now comprise almost 25% of the country's debt stock. It should be noted that the reliance on commercial borrowing over a number of years has resulted in high interest bill, which in turn increases the rigidity of public finances. St. Lucia's debt to GDP ratio has climbed steadily over the past decade. The ratio was 50.9% in 2007 and is now estimated at 66.4% in 2016. This may not seem like a significant increase, but the increase in debt servicing through the years has significantly limited the amount of discretionary expenditure available to the government of St. Louis. In 2016, debt service was approximately $294 million. Of this amount, $170 million was interest payments, and the remaining $124 million being payments on principal. Debt service for the previous financial year accounted for approximately 33% or one third of recurrent expenditure. It is noteworthy that debt service exceeds capital expenditure. Capital expenditure for 2016 stood at $214.9 million. Within the 2017-18 fiscal year, approximately $712 million of debt will have to be rolled over. This is a mix of treasury bills of approximately $450 million and bonds and notes totaling $262 million. This is one of the largest amounts which will have to be rolled over by the government of St. Lucia in any single year. This is a clear indicator that the level of debt is becoming unsustainable and measures must be taken to correct our debt situation urgently. The continuing growth of the country's debt profile has prompted the Department of Finance to pay close attention to the country's debt strategy and to continuously review, monitor, and update the country's medium-term debt strategy. The medium-term debt strategy framework provides a systematic an analytical approach for developing an effective debt management strategy. In this regard, various options are being examined with the goal to have a strategy that responds to the economic realities which exist, while efforts towards strengthening St. Lucia's capacity to manage debt is pursued. An effective debt management strategy is a plan that the government intends to implement over the medium term in order to achieve a desired composition of the government's debt portfolio, which reflects government's preferences on the cost-risk trade-off. 
It should operationalize country authorities' debt management objectives. These objectives include ensuring the government's financing needs are met at the lowest possible cost, consistent with a prudent degree of risk. A strategy should have a strong focus on managing the risk exposure embedded in the debt portfolio, which could translate into changes in the cost of debt servicing with related budgetary impact. An effective and transparent debt strategy can potentially lower the cost of debt servicing, support domestic debt market development, facilitate the relationship with investors, creditors, and rating agencies, and support efficient cash management practices. A formal and explicit strategy helps bro build broad-based support for responsible financial stewardship, ensuring governance and accountability. The International Monetary Fund, in collaboration with the World Bank, has developed a debt management performance assessment tool called DEMPA for short. The DEMPA provides a standard to measure performance by assessing the strengths and weaknesses in a country's debt, public debt management. The assessment can form the basis for the design of an actionable reform program, thereby helping harmonize donor support in this area. The DEMPA has been utilized by a number of low and middle income countries, including St. Lucia. The DEMPA diagnoses six core functions of public debt management, namely, one, governance and strategy development, coordination with macroeconomic policies, borrowing and related financing activities, cash flow forecasting and cash balance management, operational risk management, and debt records and reporting. I turn now to St. Lucia's medium, small to medium term debt strategy. The government of St. Lucia's medium term debt strategy for the period 2017 to 2000 2017-18 to 2019-20 has been prepared in the context of rising public debt to unsustainable levels significant annual debt servicing, and the urgent need for public debt management reform. The debt strategy is reviewed and revised annually with a view to meeting the government's borrowing needs, at, as I said before, at the lowest possible cost and minimizing the risk in the portfolio whilst promoting the development of domestic capital markets. The drafting of the medium-term debt strategy utilizes the analytical tools and procedures previously mentioned, which were, and it was developed through a collaborative effort with partners such as the IMF and the World Bank. The framework used to develop the strategy was a joint effort and has a strong focus on identifying and managing risk exposure in the portfolio. On this basis, refinancing risk has been determined to be the major risk which the St. Lucia debt portfolio faces. This is also quite evident given the level of debt which we have to roll over in this current year. The medium-term debt strategy has determined the most appropriate composition of debt portfolio for the government in terms of the cost risk trade-off and also taking into account the macroeconomic and market environment as related vulnerabilities. The strategy presents the borrowing plan for 2017-18 fiscal year, sources of financing, and the instruments which the government plans to issue to achieve the desired debt composition. 
The overall objective of St. Lucia's debt strategy is to raise stable and consistent levels of financing for the budget and meet its obligations all at the minimum cost, as I said, subject to prudent and acceptable levels of risk. The profile of St. Lucia's existing debt portfolio is as follows. As at March 2007, 17, sorry, the two total stock of central government debt outstanding stands at 2.89 billion EC dollars. This represents an increase by 2.7 percent when compared to the same period in 2016. The existing debt portfolio is composed of 50.9% domestic and 49.1% external debt. The largest component of domestic debt comprises bonds and notes with maturities of two to 10 years and a 15 year bond, whilst the external debt portfolio primarily consists of loans from multilateral sources representing 38% of the total external debt and 6.9% from bilateral sources. It is noted, it should be noted that during 2016-17 financial year, the government of St. Lucia successfully rolled over its treasury bill stock of 465 million. Of this amount, a 56 million treasury bill was converted into a 10-year bond. Additionally, approved bond funding of 364 million for the 2016-2017 fiscal year was met with an oversubscription in the amount of $40 million. This significantly reduced the uptake in new treasury bills to 25.5 million of the 78.5 million which was budgeted. These developments are important as the government of St. Lucia is aware of the increased refinancing risk which exists in its debt portfolio and therefore is it and this therefore is in keeping with plans to implement a strategy aimed at lengthening the maturity of the profile. The new preferred strategy is consistent with reducing the rollover risk of the portfolio um, over the next three years, that is becoming due over the next three years. The government of St. Louis is, co is confident that the implementation of that strategy, along with other fiscal consolidation measures, will assist in retooling the debt portfolio that will ultimately place the debt on a more sustainable path. A little about the other risks that might interest you, in terms of interest rate risks, it ge is generally not a concern for the Department of Finance, as most of the government's debt is fixed rate debt, approximately 90% of the entire debt portfolio, to be precise. The variable portion arises mainly from concessional external loans contracted from the CDB and the World Bank, and these are subject to refixing every six months. And the question of foreign exchange risk, there too, the exposure is not critical, given that a significant portion, 90.4% of the central government debt is denominated in EC and US dollars. St. Lucia's existing debt strategy thus far has focused on meeting the needs using the RGSM through the issuance of government's paper, Funding costs range from an implicit cost of 4.67% for a 91-day Treasury bill to 7.95% for a 15-year RGSM bond. 
Funding was also sourced from multilateral agencies such as the CDB and the World Bank, but it was to a less, to a less, that was done to a lesser extent. Emphasis was placed on rolling over maturing debt at the lowest possible cost while seeking to ensure new market debt is contracted with longer securities. Now, the government of St. Lucia is cognizant of the increasing refinancing risk, as I've said before, which exists in the portfolio. And so, the, the focus on attempting to reduce the refinancing risk um, is of critical importance to us. The average time to maturity is an indicator which is used to measure refinancing risk, and it measures the weighted average time to maturity of all the principal payments in the portfolio. There was a marginal increase in our average time to maturity of the portfolio from 4.8 years in 2015-16 to 4.9 years in 2016-17. For the existing portfolio too, the percentage of debt maturing in one year as a percentage of the total debt decreased slightly from 27.1% in 2015-16 to 26.8% in 2016-17. And this was driven mainly by the decrease in the growth of the treasury bills, which I explained earlier within the last year. The government of St. Lucia examines a wide spectrum of options in determining the feasibility of its future financing options, which pays close attention to mitigating refinancing risk and lengthening the average time to maturity. In addition, while we recognize donor support in the form of grants have declined, we are doubling our efforts on getting access to more concessional financing from traditional partners. Based on government's financing needs, the MTDSP, which is the medium term debt strategy, projects that 967 million will be funded through bond and treasury bills. Of this amount, 447 million for the rollover of treasury bills, and as I said before, 262 million from the rollover of bonds and notes. While funding for the new debt will include 50 million for treasury bills and 207 million in bonds and notes. Funding from external sources will include the disbursements from multilateral and bilateral sources up to 85 million. In short, the government's gross financing needs will be met primarily through government notes and bonds. I would like to just add that the Caribbean Information and Credit Rating Service Limited CARICRIS has reaffirmed the assigned rating as <laughs> on its regional rating scale to the debt issues of the government of St. Lucia with a stable outlook. So we just got the notice. I think the notice only came out yesterday. The government of St. Lucia is currently finalizing a comprehensive medium-term fiscal framework, which seeks to ensure that the public finances are firmly placed on a sustainable path through sustained fiscal discipline and pro-growth policies. Fiscal responsibility and debt guidelines reflecting best fit is currently being formulated. The Public Finance Management Bill, which contains some of these provisions, was tabled for first reading in Parliament on June 27th, this legislation imposes requirements for definition of fiscal rules through a policy statement and reporting obligations to Parliament within stipulated time frames. In addition, work on the debt law will commence shortly. I would like to acknowledge the recommendations made by the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce 
for the establishment of a growth and investment council. In this regard, work has commenced on strengthening the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, which will ensure a level of oversight and create a platform for national dialogue on key government policies. This, repre this represents yet another mechanism for ensuring accountability on the part of the government of St. Lucia. The focus for the government of St. Lucia is growth and job creation. Initially, growth will be driven by tourism and construction with linkages in real estate, agriculture, and manufacturing. Plans are in the pipeline for the addition of approximately 2,000 hotel rooms over the next one to four years, which will create at least an equivalent number of jobs and generate much needed economic activity in the country. The intention with tourism is to spread the benefit throughout the economy. Village tourism is one such avenue which is being pursued, which will allow for decentralized returns from tourism. It is envisaged that eight fishing villages will be transformed into unique tourism hubs based on their unique characteristics, such as their culinary background, culture, and history. A strategy for the development of the agricultural sector is aimed at increasing the production of bananas, but also to further diversify the agricultural output. Additionally, efforts are being made to increase export of agriculture produce to Caribbean markets as this is a market which has been untapped to a large extent. Work will also be done on diversifying crops. Specific crops will be targeted and grown using greenhouse technology in an effort to reduce the seasonality of crops. The concerns raised by the Chamber of Commerce regarding the incentives regime of the government of St. Lucia has been noted it is not and never has been the intention of the government of St. Lucia to prejudice the support given to foreign investors over local investors. The government of St. Lucia is in the process of actively reviewing its incentives program. Specifically, tourism related incentives are being reviewed with the intention to make St. Lucia more competitive as a destination and therefore encourage more investment in the country. However, in an effort not to disadvantage existing tourism-related businesses in St. Lucia, a comparable incentives package is also being explored with existing businesses, which existing businesses can take advantage of. Incentives for other sectors are also being considered, but it is not the intention of as it is not the intention of the government to crowd out the operation of other sectors within the economy. St. Lucia has a very promising manufacturing sector, and this is one of the sectors which has been given consideration in the crafting of an incentives package. We agree that incentives should be performance-based and performance measures will underpin the defined policies. The Chamber of Commerce during the pre-budget discussion spoke to trade facilitation and the activation of a single window to enhance revenue creation at the border, as well as improve the ease with which transactions are conducted at the border. The Chamber of Commerce and the Department of Commerce has expressed their preference in achieving this goal via the route of a PPP, public-private partnership. The Department of Finance is working with the Department of Commerce on the proposal and expects to submit its recommendation to the executive in this quarter. As mentioned earlier, the skills gap is another major impediment to growth in St. Lucia. St. Lucia has an unemployment rate of over 20%.
the jobs which are available locally are usually unattainable by the population due to lack of qualifications, experience, and skills. The government will review all of its second chance programs and tertiary level education programs with a view to aligning the offerings against the requirements of the economy. This, however, these, however, sorry, are medium to long term initiatives. In the short term, an apprentice type program is being implemented. Enhancing government support services and efficiency in the public sector remain a priority of the government. Passing of the public service management bill within this financial year is a priority. The staff orders of 1980 are antiquated and has served their purpose. The public service management bill will be more relevant, will be a more relevant guide for public officers, and very important, will hold officers accountable for their behavior, and will demand a higher quality of output from public officers. The weaknesses which were exploited within the staff orders have been corrected in this new governing legislation. It is important that taxpayers get value for money, and we must begin to question and challenge the status quo in an effort to improve processes and reduce cost. Work on a results-oriented framework for the budget which will be cascaded down to the ministries, departments, and individuals will continue. Under this framework, individuals will be held accountable for their output and for their performance. The use of technology will be more strategically developed within the service. ICT must be used to create efficiency and make it easier to do business within the state. Sub services which were once bound by time and office hours will now be put online, similar to the process for filing of tax returns, therefore making it easier and more convenient to conduct business within St. Lucia. Work on a whole of government response is currently being crafted. On the topic of taxes, it should be noted that a number of recommendations were made by the Chamber of Commerce and have been favorably considered by the government of St. Lucia. For example, the Chamber noted that a number of loopholes exist within the tax system, resulting in the leakage of revenue. We have recognized that persons, particularly high earning individuals, have exploited the 28 individual tax deductions available, resulting in these persons paying less, in fact, little or no taxes. On this basis, we are pursuing the total revamp of the personal income tax system. The new tax system will be progressive as there will be no deductions, fewer tax bans, and a more equitable distribution <coughs> in the payment of taxes on the island. The new tax regime will significantly reduce the number of persons who are required to file annual tax returns as this will now, in the case of individuals, be limited only to individuals who are self-employed. This will allow the Inland Revenue Department to improve on its efficiency of collections as more efforts can be spent on recouping revenue from businesses and individuals who do not pay taxes. The sinking fund has been reestablished and as you may be aware, a portion of the airport development tax will go into a sinking fund which will be used to repay debt. The Sovereign Wealth Fund 
is similar in concept to the fund which has been proposed by you in relation to the collection from the Citizenship by Investment Program. Instead, the capitals from the Sovereign Wealth Fund will be invested in securities as well as in suitable local investments. The profits derived will then be used to fund central government operations, which includes debt servicing. Ladies and gentlemen, I have said quite a lot. And I would like to conclude by affirming the department's commitment to sound macroeconomic and fiscal policies and strategies, which will produce economic gains that will translate into increased economic opportunities for all. However, we cannot do it alone. And so, the support of all is required in ensuring successful implementation of these strategies. Thank you for your kind attention.